Hello, beautiful people. Today, we're going to be talking about functions, emphasis on the fun, because coding is fun. Anyways, a function is basically a mini program that you can toss into your code and it'll make things easier to read, simpler to understand. So let's take a look at how they work. So a function is essentially a block of code that only runs when it gets called. I like to think of functions as a box and calling the box basically activates it and wakes up all the little squirrels inside of the box. That's your code. You can pass in data into the function and these are called parameters. And when you pass in that data and call the function, the squirrels do something with that data, manipulate it, and then at the very end, they can actually return data out of the box. So in Python, we can create a function by defining it with a name. And we use the keyword def, D-E-F, like this. And I'm gonna name this function after my dog, Jesse. So basically when you define this function, you also have to add parentheses after you've defined the name and then a colon. So this part here is defining the function and then all the code that you type in underneath that definition is the code that gets executed whenever you call the function by its name. Because I named it Jesse, I'm gonna print arf, arf, whenever we run this code. So you'll notice that if I run this, nothing happens. Well, I'm in the correct folder. You see that I'm in the functions folder. I'm using the main.py file. And here I'm in the functions folder. I'm running the main.py file. And the reason is because we never actually called this function. So how do we call that? We need to type the name of the function, so Jesse, and then put these parentheses on the end of it. And this is actually calling the function. So essentially you can think of it as here, like if this were my dog, I'm naming my dog. I'm defining the function. I'm telling the code, hey, this code, this chunk of code is called Jesse. And whenever you hear the name Jesse being called, you have to run this. This is a part where I'm actually calling my dog. I'm saying, Jesse. All right, so now let's try running the code again. And you'll see that we see arf arf. And remember how we said we can pass data into the function? So that goes here. And these are called parameters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a mood. And this mood will be a string. And this basically just becomes a variable that gets defined within the function itself. So first, I can print the mood. And then I'm going to use my if statements here. So let's say if the mood is happy, then we're printing arf arf. Otherwise, we want to print whimper. Because we have this parameter here, we actually have to pass in data into this function now. And this is called an argument. Arguments are what you pass into the function when you call it. So here, let's say Jesse is happy. So now we're calling this function where inside mood is going to equal happy. And we'll be able to see that when we print the mood. So the first thing we print is a mood, so we're printing happy. And then mood equals happy, so we print arf arf. All right, but what if Jesse is sad? So now we see that mood equals sad because this parameter mood actually equals whatever argument that you've passed in. So that's sad. And then of course this if statement isn't true, so we go to the else and we print whimper. And just a quick note, this variable is not defined outside of this function. So if I call Jesse sad, then we can print mood here and we can get sad as we just saw. But if I go down here and I print mood, what's gonna happen? So this looks a little funky, right? It says mood is not defined. Basically that means this variable name, mood, it hasn't actually been assigned to any values, which means that you can't print it out. 
but yet up here it does and that's because of the scope of the function this variable stays inside of the function and that's the same for any variable that you define within a function in a function the number of arguments that you pass in has to equal the number of parameters that are defined within the parentheses when you actually create the function so basically that means that here i've defined one parameter mood meaning when i call the function I have to pass in one argument, which is a string sad. And of course, if I added something else, such as name or something, I would have to pass in another argument over here. And right now, I'm just passing strings into the function, but in reality, they can be any data type. They can be strings, they can be numbers, booleans, lists, sets, dictionaries, and so on. So one cool thing about Python function definitions is that we can actually create default parameter values. So here, if I type in mood equals happy like this, then we don't actually need to pass in mood every time. What this is basically saying is if they pass in something, then mood would equal whatever the thing that they pass in is. So if I say Jesse sad, then here mood is sad, but if I don't do anything, then it means automatically assign the value happy to the parameter mood. So in the first time, I'm gonna do Jesse without any parameters. Jesse should be happy. In the second time, I'm gonna say, well, mood should be sad. So Jesse should be sad. Before this, I'm just gonna make this a little clearer. So print first time and then print second time. All right, so the first time we see that if we don't pass in anything, then the mood is happy because that's the default. And this if statement is true, we see our verb. And then the second time we see that because we've passed in this value sad, Jesse is sad and he's whimpering. Hmm, poor doggo. All right, so printing is cool and all but it's not actually returning a value. In order to actually return data, we need to use a keyword, return. So I know that a lot of beginners actually get confused between print and return. I think you just need to remember that print is something that gets actually printed out and shown to the person who's running the program. Basically return lets you return the data to the original place where the function was called. It's more of a quiet communication between that place in the code and the function itself. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples of the difference between print and return. So if I have a function, add one, basically what I want this function to do is just return x plus one, okay? So I'm gonna return, if I can spell that correctly, x plus one. And here I'm actually going to assign y equal to add one. And I'm gonna call it with, I don't know, five. So here I want y to be whatever the result of this function add one is on the argument five. So what do we expect? We expect y to equal, well, x plus one, so five plus one, six, right? Let's print y and see if that's what the value ends up being. Okay, so we see that y here, after you call the add one function on x, it becomes six. This function returns six, but instead let's say, let's try printing and see what happens. Okay, so python3 main.py. So what's happening here is that we see the six because when we call add one on five, it runs this function, right? And inside the function, we're printing five plus one, which is six. That's why you see the six up here. But now where does this none come from? Well, that's because down here, we're still trying to print y, and y equals the result of this add one x. But the reality here is that we're not returning anything with the return keyword. And when we don't return anything, we're returning none because, well, we're not really returning anything. So just remember that whenever you want the little squirrels inside the box to pass back a value 
to whatever had actually called that function originally, then we need to add a return statement. So we need to return x plus one. And you'll see now, well, we're printing six still because of this statement up here. And then y is now equal to six because we've returned six as a value from this function. So it might seem like functions have a lot of different components to them, a lot of moving parts that can go wrong. So why do we even bother using functions? It's good coding practice because as I said, it's kind of like a box, right? And you put, when you're moving, you're putting a lot of similar things into a box and that way you can keep track of everything using that one unit. In coding, it's very, very similar. The purpose of the function is kind of to wrap all of this code into one simple statement. And that way you can move around the statement, you can change things inside of it without having to think about the rest of the program. So basically you can take this huge complicated script and break it down into smaller chunks, which makes it a lot more manageable. Okay, also functions are very good for being able to reuse code. So let's say that we want almost the exact same thing in multiple different places of our code. That's a great example of where a function would come into play. And that little tiny thing that changes between all of them, that would just become the parameter. That way we can avoid duplicating the code because let's say that in five weeks we realize, oops, this one little piece of code that I copy and pasted 10 times has an error in it. Well, then we have to go back and dig through all 10 times that we used that copied code, and then we have to change it out every single time. But instead, with a single function, you just have to change it once from within the function because, well, those 10 times that you call that code, you're changing what's inside of the function, but not how the function gets called. So all in all, functions are fun and they make your life a lot easier when you start to use them. Make sure you guys watch next week's videos because I'm going to go over some projects where I actually take these principles that I've taught you like functions, if statements, loops, and I'm going to show you guys how to create a couple of fun projects with those. Can't wait. See you guys next time.